The Supermarine Spitfire is a British single-seat fighter aircraft that was used by the Royal Air Force and many other Allied countries before during and after World War II. The Spitfire was built in many variants using several wing configurations and was produced in greater numbers than any other British aircraft. It was also the only British fighter to be in continuous production throughout the war. The Spitfire continues to be a popular um, aircraft among enthusiasts with approximately 54 Spitfires being airworthy today while many more are static exhibits in aviation museums throughout the world. The Spitfire was designed as a short-range high-performance interceptor aircraft by R.J. Mitchell, chief designer at Supermarine Aviation Works, which operated as a subsidiary of Vickers Armstrong from 1928. In accordance with its role as an interceptor, Mitchell supported the development of the Spitfire's distinctive elliptic wing designed by B. Shenstone. To have the finished possible cross-section, this enabled the Spitfire to have a higher top speed than several contemporary fighters, including the Hawker Hurricane. Mitchell continued to refine the design until his death in 1937, whereupon his colleague uh, Joseph Smith took over as chief designer overseeing the development of the Spitfire through its multitude of variants. During the Battle of Britain, from July to October 1940, the Spitfire was perceived by the public to be the main RAF fighter, though the more numerous Hawker Hurricanes shouldered a greater proportion of the burden against the Nazi German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. Spitfire units, however, had a lower uh, tribute rate and a higher victory to loss ratio than those flying Hawk, uh, Hawker Hurricanes. Because of its high performance, Spitfires in general were tasked with engaging Luftwaffe fighters, mainly the Messerschmitt Bf 109E series aircraft, which were a close match for the Spitfire during the battle. After the Battle of Britain, the Spitfire succeeded the Hurricane to become the backbone of RAF Fighter Command and saw action in the European, Mediterranean, Pacific and South East Asia theatres. Much loved by its pilots, the Spitfire served in several roles including interceptor, fighter reconnaissance, fighter bomber and trainer and it continued to serve in these roles until the 1950s. The Seafire was a carrier-based adaptation of the Spitfire which served in the fleet air arms from 1942 through to the mid-1950s. Although the original airframe was designed to be powered by a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine producing 1,030 horsepower, it was strong enough and adaptable enough to use increasingly powerful Merlins and, in later marks, Rolls-Royce Griffin engines producing up to 2,340 horsepower. As a consequence of this, the Spitfire's performance and capabilities improved over the course of its life. Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bob Waldron and in this video we're going to be starting a whole brand new um, video build series and it is going to be of our Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C 132nd scale by Tamiya. Uh, now this is one of those kits, it's one of those absolutely um, sort of sought after, sublime, um, you know, ultimate sort of kit to build as a hobbyist um, so with this kit what I'm going to do I'm going to film it in rapid video build fashion not step by step step by step is covering everything basic intermediate advanced um, with this kit because it is such a um, you know ultimate kit so to speak it is kind of like one of these kits that someone who is a beginner who is basic isn't really going to go out and sort of pick one of these kits up and the reason for this is one um, you know there's lots and lots of detail in this so there's a lot to sort of get your head round in the sort of like the building side of it plus it's around about a hundred pound kit so it is very very expensive to be going off as a beginner and starting a kit like this so I'm really sort of assuming that those of you who are going to be watching and building along with this will be of sort of like intermediate advanced sort of level and that's the whole reason for rapid video build style is that what I do is I sort of film what is intermediate and advanced and anything that's sort of basic I won't film I'm going to assume 
you know the basics um, so this way we sort of speed up um, sort of like the build itself you know we I'm not going to show you how to cut pits off the sprue um, little bits of sanding or sort of basic spraying and stuff I'm going to assume you know that so I don't have to film it so we speed things up so hopefully uh, we might be talking maybe 10 episodes all in all until this kit is done um, now this is a kit I really really wanted to do um, and that is just generally because um, Tamiya uh, over the past couple of years have been releasing these absolutely um, ultimate kits we had the zero off them we got this Spitfire they released the P51D Mustang they released the Corsair and recently they've released the I do believe it's the Mosquito um, and they are all absolutely stunning stunning kits very expensive um, and they're all in 130 second scale but they are um, you know, th 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 just doesn't get any better than these kits and that's what this is all about. Now with this kit I'm not going to be going off and doing scratch building or adding aftermarket parts because it is just so damn good inside here. I want to sort of see, you know, what this engine looks like with just their sort of out of the box pieces because it is supposed to look stunning just out of the box um, so I want to see how that goes together and how that sort of looks without it adding anything um, and if we've got any sort of fit issues which there shouldn't be because again this is an ultimate kit it's supposed to fit together like an absolute glove um, I have read somewhere that maybe the engine cowl and the magnets that you get with this is a little bit you know we might need to sort of concentrate on that um, but apart from that we're just literally just going to follow through out of the box simple build nice rapid video build um, and we'll just pick up on the interesting um, intermediate and advanced stuff and any possible fit issues we might have so what i'm going to do i'm going to leave you now with a um a inbox review of this kit that I did um, a fair while ago uh, but just in case you haven't seen it just so you can sort of see generally what's in this kit um, you can watch this now um, if you have already seen it just skip through um, press fast forward or whatever and we'll just get down to some building Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron and in this video we're going to be having an inbox review of an absolutely smashing kit and that is the Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C by Tamiya and that is in 130 fifth scale. Um, now this is an absolutely stunning kit, um, there is a whole bunch of um, 132nd scale kits that Tammy has released over the past couple of years like you know you got the Zero, there's the um, Corsair and I do believe the uh, Mosquito was released as well and these 132nd scale kits have been absolutely stunning and very very popular in the modeling community. Very expensive but absolutely stunning kits. Now this kit was uh, first new tool down released in 2009 so we're talking about seven years old now um, but it is still absolutely stunning um, you know I cannot emphasize how good this kit is now the box art looks fantastic we've got a couple of different markings going along the sides here we've even got a bit of advertising of you know the level of detail of this kit with the engine and the cockpit and everything but let's take a look inside now I'm going to try and run through this quickly I don't want to show you every single sprue because this is a big kit and we would just be here for ages going through it um, so Let's start off with the instructions. There is a cor correction note um, just in here, which is um, strangely just removing um, a bit of sprue, which, um, I don't know, a bit over the top if you ask me, but there you go. Um, so the instructions are in black and white, plain simple paper, a um, little bit of a description about the aircraft itself. Um, moving through, um, you know, this kit is supposed to go together an absolute dream. I have built the Zero version, and that was an absolute beauty. It went together like a dream, but you need to follow the instructions um, to get it right. So this being 132nd scale, we've got lots and lots of detail. We've got photo etch with this as well. Um, you know, so we really, you know, really can build the cockpit up 
really, really nice. We do get a pilot with this as well. Um, we do have two fuselage halves coming together, um, sort of like a simple-ish sort of World War II kind of going together, apart from you got all this massive detail in the cockpit area and in the engine area as well. Uh, it is kind of cool because all your elevators and everything, they do go together um, with these rods. Uh, so you don't come along and glue your, your elevators and your flaps and everything together. You put these rods in there so that they are free moving permanently, uh, which is kind of cool. You can change how it looks whenever you feel like it. Uh, put it in whatever position you want. Got all sorts of panels and everything um, that you can sweep, switch around and, and whatnot to choose whatever variant you want, which is also you know, a nice couple of bit of options. Um, your, your wing tips as well, you can have the extended or the short tail ones and, and all that kind of cool stuff as well. Got some bombs, kind of cool. Um, then you've got this whole sort of engine section coming up here, which is an absolutely beauty. Uh, I mean, you can close this up if you don't want to tackle the engine, but there is so much detail again with the engine, which is the cool thing about this kit. I mean, really, when you get engines and stuff like that um, as a standard part of, you know, out of the box kind of kit, um, you normally have to do a little bit of scratch building just to liven it up, but there is just so much going on and so much that you get with this kit out of the box I mean literally there is no need to be going off and buying resin engines or going off and and scratch building it is just all here ready to go which is rather cool um, uh, and moving along you know the whole engine section you know goes in onto our fuselage quite easily enough and then we've got all these engine cowls which have magnets as well um, so you can um, you know take it on and off at will apparently that is probably the only little fitch issue with it um, but moving along um, you can have a in-flight display stand that you get with the kit which is rather cool which you apparently can take on and off at will as well uh, so that is again really cool um, now just as a, a bit of a note all right I mean this kit does cost a fair bit um, just looking at some prices now at uh, model hobbies or e-models uh, the kit is going for £89.99 uh, at Sprue Brothers it is $138 and in Europe with the euro is about 120 euros so we're talking a very expensive kit but you just get so much uh, for your money so let's move along to uh, the kit itself some plastic we have our um, canopy here which is absolutely stunningly clear clear plastic um, absolutely love it I mean Tamiya doesn't normally mess this kind of stuff up. Um, the main canopy section here does have a little seam line going down the middle, so that needs to be removed and sanded and polished back up. But absolutely stunning bit of detail there. Um, just gonna kind of run through the sprues here quickly. I'm not gonna get everything out, just a bunch of um, flaps and slats and ailerons and all that kind of stuff. We have our sort of main bit of surface detail. If I just bring you right in on this absolutely stunning surface detail, which is really what sells this kit. Uh, hopefully you can see how absolutely stunning all this surface detail is. Uh, <clears throat> we have really good recessed panel lines, we have um, recessed rivets, we've even got um, raised rivets where it's due, and in some places it's not just like, you know, uh, just a hole, you know, it is, um, you know, kind of representing, you know, a bolt and everything, it's really, really cool. And we do have this general sort of um, um, fine, recess rivets just like that absolutely sublime edard 148 scale spitfire mark 9 you know this surface detail is the same but in 130 second scale you know you've just got that um you know the the, the recess rivets they're just shallow enough that it will take a wash but it won't take a wash to the point where it sort of overpowers and comes to the foreground um too much absolutely perfect perfect detail Hopefully, as you can see, going along there. Um, absolutely stunning when you put a wash on it. 
Um, moving along, um, we do get a pilot with this and um, some grand, a grand crew or another officer or something um, just there in the bags. Again, I don't want to get everything out. Then we have our fuselage section. Right, let's just focus in on this. Again, you know, we can see that more of the detail, the level of quality. You know, this is next generation uh, type surface detail. Right, and hopefully as you can see, all sorts of levels of um, recessed rivets and everything. It's not just you've got these tiny, tiny little rivets going on all over the place, but you know, you've know you got them at different sizes and different levels and different deepnesses. Um, you know, it's not just all one size, which you know can normally happen a lot with kits. And there you go, absolutely stunning, stunning detail. On the inside, we do have um, a little bit of detail going on in here. We've even got some of the ribs going on. There are ejector pin marks, um, which you may want to take care of one or two of them. They are a rather sort of shallow, but still they are, they are there. Um, again, moving along, um, all sorts of bits of detail in the bags here. These are like um, some panels. Again, same level of detail as on the rest of the kit. We've got um, some landing gear detail here as well. Um, same sort of level of detail as well. Quickly trying to go through all the little bits. Cool little bit of um, you know um, engine detail here as well. The, the like mounts and stuff, which is cool. Again, we've got some more detail. I'll show you some more detail later, but you know, as I say, there's a lot of sprues here I need to sort of get through. Again, got more detail there. As you can see, there's so many different sprues with so much sort of detail going on with this. You do get, as I say, you do get a free stand with this. Um, it is quite plain, simple, black. Um, cool little stickers as well you get to put on there as well. Um, another sprue here again with more detail. I think this is like um, wheel well detail as well. Um, I don't think we need to show you that. Nothing um, that you haven't sort of already seen. Then we've got some um, cockpit detail, which you know we all want to see the cockpit detail. So zooming in on this, we've got high level of detail going on. Um, the sprues throughout just don't have any flash whatsoever going on with it. Very very crisp highly detailed for out of the box we've got some of the walls for our um, cockpit area here as well as you can see all different dials very very solid and crisp detail um, we've got our seats over here which build up and lots and lots of pieces build it up into a really stunning bit of um, um, seat there as well and um, this is where our instrument display panels are going to go and everything again high levels of detail uh, one thing i haven't noticed about this is on this side where our doors are there are ejector pin marks inside there so if you have your your door open or, or even closed really this is 132 second scale you're going to have these ejector pin marks inside there um, and you're kind of going to want to take care of them but those are hard to take care of because they're um, recessed you've got raised detail around it and sanding that out and everything is not an easy task um, but so far the kit is absolutely stunning um, and then we have um, our engine detail um, absolutely stunning engine detail as I say I mean you don't need to go off and buy any aftermarket parts you don't have to go off and um, do any kind of um, scratch building it is all here and it is so crisp and well detailed hopefully as you can see there all those lovely nuts and bolts you know just cannot really fault it hopefully as you can see again lovely minute detail Definitely, definitely um, top notch for out of the box. Hopefully, as you see in there, looking absolutely stunning. Right, so moving along, what we've got left in the box. Now, because it's an expensive kit, um, you get that little bit extra than you would from a normal kit. So, um, just let's move along. We've got um, a bunch of, I do believe, all sorts of decals and stuff here. 
Uh, well, to start off with, we've got this nice metallic sort of sticker here that goes onto our display stand, rather cool. We've also got some canopy masks as well, which is a nice added extra. The decals are looking um, looking rather, rather stunning as well. You know, all the detail on here is nice and readable. The colors are all good. It's all in registry. Um, you know, looking a stunning bit of kit. And we've got a bit of um, instrument display panel detail here, which I think just blacks things out on there. And then we've also got um, all our rounders and everything looking rather, rather clear in a satin finish. Now, these decals are by Tamiya, and Tamiya are not by far the best um, decals you can get in the world, but they are not the worst. Um, you do kind of need to use products like, um, what was it again, the Mr. Setter, or the Mr. Mark range, I do believe it was. Um, but moving along anyway, we have um, some markings here, a nice colour sort of poster thing here which tells you where all your your decals are going to go and the markings and everything and by the way they did release with this kit um, some paints that actually go with it some accurate paints specifically for this which I'll just have a quick look they're just up here um, here we go they are um, the Ocean Grey 2 RAF, which is XF82, uh, and XF83 Medium C Grey 2, and XF81 Dark Green 2. Um, they really did go off and match up the colours, absolutely stunning. Whenever it comes around to doing a Spitfire Mark 9C, you know, these are the colours you want to be going off and getting. They're really easy to use, these paints, and um, the colours, they are just spot on basically also what you get um, with this kit which is a really cool added extra which is basically a reference booklet um, it's a nice little booklet gives you loads more information it's a good read about the actual aircraft as well um, but what you also sort of get with it is all these sort of little reference photos of the different Spitfires, um, and as you go through a bit more, you then start to get stuff like engine detail, which is really cool to have this references for you, um, cockpit detail, and all sorts of little bits of detail to know sort of like what color should you be painting this, maybe a bit of how it's sort of weathering, and, 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 and you know, just really good reference guide, which is really something that I think all kits should have. Um, but this kit, isn't finished yet there is a nice little special section that you also get with this kit which is nicely separately uh, packaged in its own little box and it needs to be because this stuff is really sort of fine so let's have a look inside here and what we have here is our top engine cowl section right and looking at it Again, the surface detail is just absolutely gorgeous, just like the rest of the kit. Let's try and focus you in on it. And hopefully, as you can see, absolutely stunning detail, all sorts of raised bits of detail as well. Lovely recessed panel lines, recessed rivets, absolutely stunning. In fact, I think I'll just get out some, um, some black pigments, right? Because really, you know, you want to sort of appreciate um, how good this detail is. All right, so if we get out some black pigments, right, let's bring you out a little bit. All right, and let's just rub this on here now. Right, and I'm just rubbing a little bit of a section, and then let's just lick the kitchen paper towel on a cleaner section, and just wipe up the rest of this and now you should be able to see a lot more better the kind of detail that we're looking at right, if we could just focus you in there we go hopefully you can see you know that's the kind of level of detail we've got lovely uh, tiny recess rivet uh, detail going on in there as well as lovely recess panel line detail absolutely stunning so what makes this um, kind of special um, what makes this special is and, and why it's been separately bagged it's got extra it's in its own box as well it's got a bit more cardboard there that is because it is so so thin 
right, compared to the rest of the plastic in the kit, you know, this has been made specifically really, really thin. Um, because when you, because to have these, you know, uh, engine cowls coming on and off and, and attaching to the whole engine section, uh, if you had the plastic as thick as it would normally be, which is, hopefully as you can see here, the difference in the thickness Right, if we just sort of show you, right, you can sort of really sort of see, I mean, how different and, uh, you know, it really is. It is so much thinner and they've made it finer so it looks more realistic, more in scale and looks really, really nice. And they've also done it with the rest of the engine cowls going around the engine section so you can really sort of have that realistic look, right? And hopefully as you can see, I mean, it's so thin, I mean, you shine a bit of light through it or put it up to the light, you can actually sort of almost sort of see through it. And there you go, you can actually see through the plastic and see you know, the detail on the other side. That is how thin is it and that's why it makes it um, look so much more realistic and nicer. Um, so really good sort of engineering and, and, and molding and, and all that, so hats off to uh, Tamiya for that. We then also get a nice bit of photo etch as well to go with it, which we've got all sorts of like seat belt detail. Um, I do believe you've got your, your flaps as well here, um, uh, instrument display panel detail and stuff. Uh, the photo etch, I mean, it's not Eddard. I mean, when it comes to photo etch, Eddard are, you know the best you can get but actually i mean it's um it's uh, it's not as thin as eddard but it's 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 thin enough to still be um good photo etch so you know it's a nice added bit of extra and it's it's not just like a gimmick little bit of photo etch that some companies do i mean you do get a nice big piece of photo etch there which is rather cool then moving along we do get all these um little added extras like there's the 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 rods for having your ailerons and everything constantly moving whenever you want it, you know, a little screwdriver and stuff um, with all your screws and bolts and whatnot so that it's just part of putting it together. Um, there are um, some magnets with this for the engine cowls, tiny, tiny little magnets, and you also get some rubber wheels. Love them or hate them, I like them to be honest with you. Uh, and it's a, a nice added extra. So, um, all in all, I mean, it is an expensive kit, but it is an absolutely stunning kit, and it is gonna look absolutely amazing on anybody's um, display piece. It also goes together an absolute dream. Anywhere you look on the internet, people will say how well it goes together. And if it doesn't go together, it is down to you making the mistake. Um, I do believe the magnets are a little bit of a problem around the engine cowl as well. Uh, and there was one or two ejector pin marks in not the sort of place you want to see them. But the, 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 the level of detail that's going in on the engine, on the cockpit, on the surface detail, it is just an absolutely stunning kit and I absolutely love it. I love all this um, really tiny, flimsy, thin uh, engine cowl stuff. It just makes it look so much more realistic. Um, so yeah, a big thumbs up um, here at Genesis Models for this kit. I'd absolutely love to build this kit. I've been wanting to build this kit for years. Um, so yeah, big thumbs up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this inbox review. So until next time, my name is Bobby Waldron. This is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed. So just to get started, I mean, not really sort of teach you anything, but just to really sort of show you how damn good this kit is. If we bring you in, right, what we have here is um, where we sort of basically sort of get a panel and then we sort of attach it to the model. Now, normally in these instances, um, you know, you'll end up with some sort of maybe gappage going on around it or uh, maybe it doesn't quite fit and you've got to sand it down or something. I mean, normally with sort of standard kits, that's what you normally have to do. But look how well this fits. I've not done any um, sanding or sort of getting this to fit perfectly. I mean, this is just literally the kit itself. Absolutely um, stunning fit just there. I mean, the the kind of technology that might must be going into this like next generation technology to get that to fit so so beautifully is just absolutely stunning um, and here's the side where I've actually glued it in um, I mean you just can't even tell really that there's any sort of 
like there's two pieces there basically it doesn't just doesn't look like it i just wanted to just basically show that off with this kit so we're now going to move along with a bit of photo etch now the photo etch you get with this kit isn't um, your usual eddard photo etch it does feel a little bit more on the thicker side um, however it's um you know it's still good it's um, pretty much still as good as um eddard but what we're going to do is the usual um let's get out our sort of cutting mat here that you can get from rb productions really cool little cutting mat it is rather simple um and what you also want is a number i do believe that's a number nine blade by swan uh, swan was it swan morton and then what you want to do is pick out p16 let's just get you right in and as always what we want to be doing is we start off by butting our blade up to the tab and then we bring in the top piece right and the reason for this top piece is what we end up doing is we have two solid smooth surfaces um, basically sandwiching in our photo etch and what this basically does is stops us from doing any sort of bending or um, knocking it any way it just keeps it all nice and flat so we we butt up our blade we then butt up our top template right and then with the number nine blade we rock it right we don't do a sawing motion or a cutting motion we rock it right and the whole reason for rocking it is um, it just stops us if we go in a sawing motion we can sort of drag the photo etch um, but by doing the rocking motion all we end up really doing is just um, basically just cutting it with no sort of pulling on the photo etch so butt up your um, blade butt up your top template and then we give it that rocking motion and then this should be free because I have already cut um, one the other tab earlier right and then at this stage we could go off and get um just to sort of trim it up um i've sort of lost sort of lost my other um pair of tweezers but this one should do if you've got any sort of nasty areas where um maybe you know some of that tab is still showing i don't know how well you can just see that there there's like a little bit of a tab maybe just a little bit just left over there but um, it is a bit hard to see but basically all you want to do is get out a metal file um, some tweezers where you could sort of pinch and sort of flatten the photo etch again you know the same principle is being applied here we're having something that's flat sandwiching our bit of photo etch to keep it um, nice and protected stop any sort of bending and then where our little tab is we can get our metal file Right, and we can give that a nice gentle bit of a sanding just like so and then that brings us to our um a nice tool here um pretty much you can get them at pretty much any sort of online sort of shop or um some sort of um brick and mortar stores um, and it's just basically a nice um, bending template um, and what this basically is it gives you all these different teeth to sort of do different sizes of um, photo etch and then you can basically bend them which what you do need as well which also normally comes with these types of kits um, you can I mean these are quite expensive I think this one was around about the 50 60 pound mark um, you can get ones that are half the size of this and now obviously they're cheaper you can get photo etch ones um, which uh, I haven't brought one myself they're apparently you know they're pretty good but you can't really beat one of these nice solid ones and what we basically do is where we need to do any sort of bend so um, let's take our first bend over here right what you want to do is maybe actually uh, this one would be better right because we've got to watch out for the size bring you in a bit bit closer right and what you want to do you want to sort of now line this up sort of turn these little knobs so it slowly sort of starts to lock it in and you want to just where you're going to make the bend get it as nice and parallel as possible right so that when we do our bend bringing in our blade and we sort of get underneath that might need to be a little bit tighter we sort of get underneath the bit of photo etch right and then we basically bend this up right and we just do this nice and sort of slowly 
bending it a bit at a time we want a 90 degree angle on this one right, and there we go we've got that bent so then it is good as well when messing with photo edge to sort of play around and use your your tweezers just to keep everything sort of good and then once you've got that sort of nice 90 degree angle there what we can then do is we can sort of do the same we could sort of lock this into here right and by having these different sort of size teeth even with something that has already been bent like this if you find the right one you can still sort of maybe bring this one over just a little bit make sure you get it in right before you do your bend all right no nope. we need to bring that across a little bit more and line that up and bend that also to the 90 degree angle and with this one you'll also see that there was there's a nice little sort of tab at the back there that there has been sort of designed to sort of glue that um, in place but you don't have to worry about that um, I mean in some cases you don't need to always sort of use these um, sort of bending tools here I mean you can almost get away with if you haven't got the bending tools I mean simple sort of pliers and if you're sort of careful sorry not pliers my tweezers if you're sort of careful you can sort of bend it yourself like so All right but it is a bit more sort of efficient and more sort of precise if you do sort of use the proper bending tools All right and then as you can see from this piece here which is now all sort of done all we need to do is glue that on at the back just there